So, you just got out of law school, and you're a good lawyer, but you want to be a really good lawyer. Let me show you how. Ah. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make Daredevil's helmet or cowl or whatever you want to call it, either or. So in this video, I'm going to take you through my whole process, where to get the 3D files, how to print them, how to paint them, and maybe a couple little bonus things at the end. And just like having to wait through all of season one to see his final costume, I promise the ending of this will be worth it. Let's get started. All right, to kick this off, the first thing we're going to need is a good 3D file to print. And I was able to get this file off of do3d.com. So let's take a look. The helmet file itself is about $30, but if you use my discount code FBT20, you'll get 20% off, which is great. And it comes in a few pieces. You have the eyes, the uh, the main dome part, and then a little back cover. Now I've gone and dropped all three parts in the mesh mixer. And if you don't have mesh mixer, get it, it's great. And it allows you to just automatically rebuild the helmet. Now this is a very tight fitting helmet. It's meant to be snug on uh, your head. So I really need to nail the scaling on this. And up until a little while ago, I was afraid to make this helmet because of that reason. So now I have this really creepy, uncomfortable 3D scan of my head. And what that's going to allow me to do is not only print this off and scare my wife, but now I have a 3D model of my own head to the exact shape and size. And I can use this to scale the helmet perfectly. If I go ahead and load in the helmet file, and this is just haunting, what at first thing I'm going to need to do is take this helmet and rebuild it. Now I don't need the eye lenses. We'll just get rid of those, but these two parts are separate. I need these to be combined. So when I do the uniform scale, they scale up properly. If I scale this and make this hundred percent wider of the main part, and I don't scale up this back part, then we're not going to have everything fitting properly. Okay. First thing you're going to do is select the first part, hold shift and select the next part. It'll give you an option over here in the corner to combine. And now this helmet is one piece. So now as I move it around, scale it up and down, it's all going to go together. And then when we're done, we're going to separate shells and break them back apart, export them and print them. So let's see how close we can get this scaled. Now to move things around in mesh mixer and scale them up and down, first thing you're going to want to do is go to edit, transform, and this is going to allow you to move everything in the X, Y, Z direction. But then sitting over here, you have your size X, Y, Z, and this is your, uh, your scale, sorry, your scale X, Y, Z. And right now one is 100%. I can make it 200% by typing in two. That looks, that'd actually be really funny. Um, why does it look like a cat? But I want to make this helmet, I think just a little bit wider but I don't want to make it longer. It actually seems to line up with my nose pretty nicely. And then if I take an account for my hair and the, this cap I'm wearing in order to get the 3D scan to come out properly, I think the helmet's going to work fine how it is, but I just want it a touch bit wider. 05. All right. So that made it just a smidge wider. And now my head isn't clipping through the sides of the helmet. Maybe just a tad, you can see right in here, it's um, clipping just a little, but again, I have that cap on and this looks pretty good. I think that's what I'm gonna roll with. All I did was scale it up in one direction and I can play with this as much as I want. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna then separate the shells. And now what I can do is I can export these uh, newly scaled pieces out of Mesh Mixer and load them into Cura and print them separately. I often get the comment, Frank, you must have so much time on your hands. But the truth is, I don't, but I don't have to worry about that anymore thanks to today's sponsor, HelloFresh. As a lot of you know, aside from content creation and making props, I've been active duty military for almost 10 years and my wife has been working for them just as long. And the last thing we wanna do after a long day of work is go grocery shopping. HelloFresh has been a perfect solution for us. Not only does it eliminate long trips to the grocery store, they also have meals that can be ready in as little as 20 minutes. That's why we've been using HelloFresh for the past three years and I was so happy when they reached out to sponsor a video. Prior to HelloFresh, my culinary skills amounted to basically making spaghetti and pouring a jar of sauce on it. But after using HelloFresh for a few Few years, I've actually learned a bunch of new cooking techniques and I can even make meals now that impress my wife. Aww. Meals like bacon buckaroo burgers, crispy kicking cayenne chicken cutlets, and one of our personal favorites, hoisin honey chicken, which you're watching me make right now. HelloFresh provides you with pre-portioned ingredients, which not only cut down on time, but also cut down on food waste. According to a study by the University of Michigan, HelloFresh cuts down on 25% of food waste compared to grocery shopping. So if any of that interests you, use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGFRANKLYB16 for up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts across six HelloFresh boxes 
plus free shipping. Oh, the video. All right, here is the newly scaled helmet, and it might take a little bit longer to import. Um, I haven't figured out how to make Mesh Mixer not do that. I think it edits the file a little bit, but anyway, no, no nothing to worry about there. Now, this does fit standing straight up on a normal print bed. However, to print it faster, use less supports, and not risk um, this little point down here, this little point area failing and falling over, I actually tilted it back 90 degrees, actually probably a little bit more, something along the lines of that, because this is where all my support interface is gonna be now at the bottom. I'm not gonna have to worry about losing detail on the sides, these little spike points over here, they're gonna print fine. And I, but I am gonna get a little bit of top layering on the uh, top of the helmet, but that's easily um, sanded and filled in. Now, if you position it like this, I think it might fit on an Ender 3, uh, just barely. Well, let's see if we can make it work. Let's see, maybe, maybe something like that. Hey, look at that, it actually fits. It's actually kind of impressive. So play around with whatever print settings you're gonna use. Um, you, can't, uh, you can support block in here if you really want to, that's totally fine. And maybe drop in one or two support blockers in here and then you can scale those up. Because you don't need to fill in this entire spot, but you just want a little bit of help to make it survive and then whatever you think is gonna survive back here. I printed this on my Ender 5 Plus um, with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So I actually did end up losing a little bit of the detail that was um, hiding over here, but more or less, this is how I printed it. Whoo, buddy, that's gonna use a lot of support. Yeah, definitely play around with your angles and all of that. Let's see if we can make this a little bit better. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. I had to block out some weird supports that were being generated up here. Way less supports on the inside. Uh, I know it's gonna survive. It has a really nice base. I'll probably still go through and block out all of these weird stringy supports that are being generated here. We don't need any of that. I've also gone and left all of my settings open here if you guys wanna copy any of them. Remember, this is a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on an Ender 5 Plus. And because of that, like I said, I lost um, some of the details over here on the side, but it did give me some of that texturing up in near the ears. Now you're gonna see up on the top of the nose, there is some top layering effects, but you can sand that down super easily. You don't have to worry about that. A little bit of filler primer, um, or a little bit of even Bondo or Spot Putty if you really wanna use it, can really make those lines disappear. It's all about that post-processing. And there isn't, I know it looks like a lot of supports on the inside, but there really isn't a lot at all. It just helps the survivability. Block out whatever you want, get this thing printed, and hopefully it fits. All right. All right, we're fresh off the printer, support's broken. I had some red window tint um, that I kind of glued in there haphazardly. And I gotta say, it fits. I, I, I don't think I could have gotten this any closer. Um, I, it doesn't really cover his nose too much. This is, this is wonderful. And everything's red right now. I, 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 rose, ro rose colored glasses, whatever the heck it is. Um, this is amazing, I think making it wider like I did in the program, that was the move. And literally, if I push it left and right, it, it doesn't move at all. That's perfect. Um, maybe I could have shrank the front and back just a little bit, but now because of that, I have the room to put this back plate on. Let's see, I'm trying to line this up right here. Where are you? How does this work? Okay, it goes like that. Sorry, I'm new. Um, that fits something like that. So that'll that'll actually work. I'm, I'm trying to use my my camera to see what I'm doing. No, that's even better, that's perfect. I, this is amazing, I'm so happy with it. I have some cool ideas for the eyes that I want to experiment with as I do this project, but for a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on my Ender 5 Plus, this came out really, really smooth. Now I was worried about a little bit of a top layer effect. You can see it right here above the nose. Um, that's totally fine, the eyes still came out great, and uh, one coat of filler primer should really take care of a lot of this. A little bit of stringing, and I gotta knock out all that support, but this is all easy stuff to do. So let's get this in the paint, even though honestly, I could probably hit it with some Sharpie, detail it red, and it would look pretty cool. But uh, yeah, oh, this is, this is wonderful. Sweet. I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with more sanding and priming techniques. Sand it till you're happy with it and it's smooth. Start hitting it with some nice primer. I use Dupacolor Filler Primer. Once you're happy with the primer stage and rinsing and repeating, move on to paints. But until then, how about a little montage and time lapse? I'll be painting this thing.
Okay, so you're probably gonna notice something. I went over it with like three different coats of red, none of them which were the same. Now during the painting process of this, um, the first paint failed. It completely orange peeled the entire helmet and ruined all of it. This guy right here is actually the culprit. I thought this like matte metallic red would look good after I hit it with another um, clear coat matte and it just completely orange peeled the uh, Krylon paint I had used as a base coat. Now this can happen sometimes, you're gonna have paint failures and you kinda need to get used to it. So I stripped it all down, went back to basics and I tried to find another red that was gonna look good and I went through a different couple different options. So I could have done the metal cast red and really layered it on thick. That's the same uh, red that's actually on my Iron Man suit back there and you can kinda make this stuff as dark as you want if you just pile it up but I didn't wanna waste the metal cast just to make it dull again with some matte clear coat. So I landed on some Duplicolor Perfect Match. Now you guys are probably gonna be really mad at me. I don't remember which color I finally landed on. I'm 99% sure it's the Dark Cherry Metallic, but it also could be the, uh, the Tor Torator Red Metallic. They're both really close. Um, yeah, test it out. Once I was done with that, and I didn't show myself doing this, but it was really simple. It's a um, the 1K clear duplicolor, but it comes in a matte finish, and this was perfect because I didn't want it nice and metallic and glossy. I just did a couple dustings of this and called it a day, and it really brought down the, that metallic shine into a nice matte finish, you know, kind of like the can says. I think the nice matte finish turned out pretty cool. Now with the printing and painting done, let's move into the, um, I don't know, bonus features. All right, so let's talk about the eyes. This is something that a lot of people have been asking me about. How do I get the red lens eyes in this thing? And it's just window tint, that's it. Now, depending on your flavor and how red you want these to be, I've even seen some images, he has black eyes, and then you could just do some dark window tint, something like, you know, my Mandalorian helmets. And this is a super simple technique. If you want more information on it, go check out the video I have linked up here or linked down below on making cosplay visors. But you can get chrome red window tint for super cheap. I mean, this is more than I'm ever gonna use on really anything. After that, you need to get your hands on some clear acetate plastic. Um, you can use, you know, uh, binder organizers, really any type of thin flexible plastic is gonna be perfect for this. And you're just gonna go through, put the tint on, smooth it out, cut it to fit, and glue it into the helmet. And depending on how flexible the plastic is, you might not even need to heat it up or anything. You can just put it in there, glue it on, and call it a day. All right, so I wanna take a quick minute to show you the electronics that I'm putting in the Daredevil helmet. Um, now, I know his helmet doesn't have electronics. I don't care. I, I think some light-up eyes would be cool. Now, there isn't a lot of room in here because it's such a tight-fitting helmet. So what I've done is I've taken two AAA batteries. Now, this is literally the same thing that's in the, um, the battery pack for the cosplay LED eyes. Um, I've pulled the switch out of it, and when you put the positive and negative to a battery together, you, you know, it's the same thing. Now, I am going to have to take these out to charge them. I am going to go and order a LiPo battery, but the ones I ordered aren't the right size, and they're annoying. So I'm going to do this, and this battery pack is going to sit right here above the brow of the eye. I've already tested it out. I, I have room in there. It's the only spot that I have room. So there's going to be this bar um, of electronics sitting right up here, and then I've taken the switch to the LED, from the LED eyes and stuffed it right under here. So I can actually reach up here with my finger and just flip the switch on and off. And you can see the eyes turning on and off right there. It works perfectly. I just used a little bit of super glue to basically build up a little bit of a, uh, a ledge right there. And that's it. It's a very simple on off circuit. I've basically just taken the cosplay LED eyes and just stripped down all the plastic. This way it's the bare metal. So yeah, it works. I'm happy with it. I'm going to clean up some of the wires and uh, we'll see how this thing looks. Okay, so here's everything cleaned up for the most part. I want to focus more on the inside and the back little, um, you know, panel I have here. I just took some rafts extra wrap material and some Velcro and made some tabs. Now they don't hold it on the best, they do stretch, but I don't want this thing squeezing my skull too much. Um, I might adjust them a little bit, but no one's looking at the back. And then in the top, I have some elastic bands to just give it a little bit of play. And these panels do subduct into it, each other. Um, so it, it definitely lets it fit on my head a lot better. And then as for the inside, I've gone and added some felt. I've added some foam up top where the batteries are. And again, I'm gonna swap those out for a LiPo battery eventually. I've added some electrical tape or duct tape at the bottom here because when the eyes were on, it shines a light onto the bottom of my like nose. It almost gives me like a red mustache. It's kind of funny, but everything's in there. It's comfortable, it's compact, and that's the whole helmet. So uh, yeah, let's move on. Okay, so without showing you too much of the finished product, um, 
I, I want to do a little bit of weathering on this thing, and I, I imagine it's a very similar material to like Captain America's helmet. It's probably some type of carbon fiber polycarbonate BS type of thing. I don't think it's metal, but it probably has some type of metal core or metal parts underneath it. So what I've started doing was taking a silver paint sharpie. These things are these things are great for modeling, for details, for whatever, and a razor. Now, I put a lot of clear coat on this, matte clear coat. So what I'm doing is kind of going around the edges, the little detailed spots, and putting a little bit of Sharpie, and then almost scratching it off. And that's also scratching the clear coat, and it's kind of seeping in there. And I'm just trying to get those damage strokes, if his head got grazed, if it kind of fell over and got nicked. Um, I'm gonna kind of go around the edges. You can see a little bit on the side that I've already done, especially on the corners, because those that's gonna take the brunt of the impacts. That's what's gonna get worn down the most are these hard edges. You can see a little bit more on like the horn right there. So I'm gonna go through that and see if I can make this look, look a little bit more realistic and better. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about before we finish up this helmet is something to cover the rest of his face. Isn't this really uncomfortable and confusing? So this is just a simple um, uh, scarf. There's a word for this thing. I don't know what it is, but it's a face mask. Cool, awesome. They sell them everywhere now thanks to COVID. Huh, great. Now, what I'm using this for is to cover the rest of his face. And a few people saw it on TikTok and Instagram. It looks weird when you can see his ears with the helmet on. So I was able to pick this up at, I think, Durham Sports. And it's very comfortable. And now, it doesn't have the texture that his actual... Uh, cloth covering face mask has. It's a really textured piece of fabric that's in the show. I don't have the capability to recreate that. If you can find out where to get something like that, more power to you. But for the sake of this, I think just covering up the side of my head, kind of like that, should get the job done. And I look like an idiot, but let's see how this thing looks when it's all said and done. So what do we think guys? Does this sell the overall look? I am so glad I added these red LED eyes. I think this is just such a cool additional feature that if you, you were doing photo shoots at night, this would really put it over the top. And the fact that you can still see the red LED eyes with the lights on, with me being illuminated, makes it that much better. Unfortunately, the position I do have this switch does make it look like I'm picking my nose every time I try to turn it on and off, but I really couldn't find a more comfortable or better suited spot for it. So I guess if I'm standing like this, it really looks like I'm just trying to dig in there for some uh, gold, but the switch is right up here under my eye and it works perfectly. And you know what I think's even cooler? This Daredevil helmet actually fits the 3D printed bust of my head um, because it's not as squishy the uh, the back doesn't close enough but this is a really cool way to display it you know I can have this on the shelf and it's on my head but it's not on my head weird if you guys have any comments questions concerns about this build please leave a comment down below I do my best to respond to all of them and if you haven't already please make sure you subscribe to the channel this way you can stay up to date on all the videos I have coming out it shouldn't take you long at all just hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell and let me know down below if you like the little adjustments I made to this I know that the helmet's supposed to be like a two-tone red depending on what you look at and do you like the red LED eyes or do you think it's a little much and one last thank you to do3d for providing me with these files guys there's a link for it down below along with a discount code so go grab your own and one last huge thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. All their links are down below along with a discount code for all the great offers. But that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. Now I got to go bust some teenager out of jail for being too sticky. Ah. Is this a blooper? It's about to be. Oh, oh, oh. You saw it, I got it. Oh, I'm done, one and one.